so today we'll be focusing on the topic fibroids they are also called as myoma so let's define what are fibroids so fibroids are proliferative well circumscribed pseudo encapsulated benign tumor which are composed of smooth muscles and fibrous tissue in fact this is the most common type of tumor among the uterus as far as the incidence is concerned almost 70% of female by the age of 50 develop fibroids but despite the fact about 70% of female develop fibroids most of them are extremely small in size and are asymptomatic and they are also diagnosed incidentally during clinical examination or other imaging modalities so that is why even though 70% of female acquire fibroids they do not show any symptoms and they are most commonly seen in nulliparous women and in fact myomas are the most common indication for hysterectomy now let's look at the etiology of myoma so the etiology is usually unknown but it is associated with chromosomal abnormalities particularly involving the chromosome number 12 and the growth of the fibroids mainly depend on estrogen it actually depends on both estrogen and progesterone but predominantly it depends on the levels of estrogen and it is most commonly seen in obese female and in nulliparous female and it is also associated with the growth factors such as tgf beta platelet derived growth factors and epidermal growth factors now we'll classify different types of fibroids let's look into this picture first so here you can see the letter b which denotes the intramural intramural fibroids you can see here another one which is exactly in the middle of the uterus and the second type here you can see letter a which is sub serous fibroids and then we have c over here this is a type of sub mucosal fibroid so as far as the intramural is considered almost 70% of fibroids are intramural fibroids and as far as the sub mucosal is considered they grow outwards from the uterus as you can see here and then we also have a pedunculated uh, versions of sub mucosal fibroids you can see the letter e which is a pedunculated version which goes towards the vagina so that is why it is named as pedunculated sub mucus vaginal fibroid and the letter f is the fibroid which is seen in the broad ligament which is behind here so this uh, fibroid which is seen in the broad ligament are also called as intra ligamentous fibroids so th these are the basic classification of fibroids mainly sub serous fibroids intramural fibroids and sub mucosal fibroids <clears throat> so now we'll look at the histopathology so what are the pathological changes which are associated with fibroids firstly we have hyaline degeneration so this is the most common type of pathological change seen in the fibroids here the fibroids get a waxy kind of character next up we have cystic degeneration where there is hyaline degeneration along with it there is liquefaction seen in the fibroids next up we have the calcification of the fibroids which is most commonly seen in the postmenopausal female and this is also termed as stone womb because the fibroid calcify and hence the name stone womb next up we have the fatty degeneration where there is fatty change associated with hyaline degeneration of the fibroid then we have the sarcomatous degeneration which is a malignant degeneration and it is the rarest kind of the pathological change which is seen amongst the fibroids in fact less than 1% of myomas undergo sarcomatous degeneration now let's focus on the clinical features of the fibroids so firstly we have the menstrual disturbances where there is heavy and prolonged bleeding seen in the females mainly 
This is seen in intramural type where there is increased vascularity, hyperplastic endometrium and there is increased bleeding because of the increased size of the uterine cavity. Next up we have abdominal swelling obviously when the size of the fibroid is increased there is abdominal swelling and then we have pressure symptoms involving the bowel and bladder function where there is increased frequency of urination followed by a retention of urine can be most commonly seen in submucosal variety. Next up we have pain. Uh, apart from the dysmenorrhea where there is um, increased amount of pain, there is also other reasons for pain in fibroid patients which are predominantly due to infections. Different types of degenerations can also cause pain and also torsion can also lead to the pain in the fibroid patients. Next up, the chief complaint is infertility among the fibroid patients, especially the submucous myoma, which may prevent the implantation process. So we'll once again go to the picture in order to understand this. So here the letter C is actually the submucous fibroid. And in this case, we can see that generally the implantation happens in the endometrial layer here in this region. So you can see that this will prevent the implantation process to occur in the endometrial layer. That way the female is susceptible to infertility. And another reason is all these fibroids within the uterine cavity, the body suspects it as a foreign body. And due to this effect, there is increased uterine contractions that might also hinder the process of implantation or even if there is successful implantation, the increased uterine contractions may also induce abortions in these patients. So that is why the chief complaint and clinical feature is infertility among the patients. Next up, we have chronic hemorrhagic anemia. Obviously, due to the increased bleeding, there is chronic post-hemorrhagic anemia seen in the patients. Now let's focus on the diagnosis. So predominantly, uh, we use imaging modalities, but apart from that, we can also use abdominal and vaginal examination. And in case of abdominal uh, examinations, we can palpate the uterus and feel the, the nodular tumor protruding against the anterior abdominal wall. And then in case of vaginal examination, we can, we can see the uterine enlargement, the shape of the uterus and irregularities which are seen in the uterus. And um, in the imaging modalities, the most commonly used is ultrasonography. In fact, ultrasound accurately assess the uterine dimensions, the location of the myoma and the interval of the growth of the fibroids. Next up, we, we can also use CT and MRI. Apart from these diagnostic modalities, we also have additional tests such as blood tests, coagulation, bleeding profile, all these things can be done additionally. And in fact, we can also conduct um, endometrial <coughs> biopsy or uterine carotage in cases of abnormal uterine bleeding just in case to rule out endometrial hyperplasia or other malignancy. So these are all additional tests which include blood tests, coagulation and endometrial biopsy can also be performed. Now let's focus on the treatment modalities of fibroids. So as far as the treatment is concerned, we have uh, firstly medical management. We can use GnRH agonists in a depot form which would produce a hypoestrogenic state. That way they would decrease the size of the uh, fibroids. Next up, we can use GnRH antagonists like Abarelix and Cetrorelix. They would cause a pituitary down regulation that way decrease the ovarian hormones. So there is decreased hormones and that way they decrease the size of the fibroids. Next up, we can use Danazol tablets and we can use Mifeprestone, which is an anti-progestin. And we can also use combined OCPs and we can use NSAIDs just to decrease the pain component in the patients. So these are all the medical management. Now let's focus on the surgical management. So surgery is uh, generally thought when the patient has excessive bleeding, when there is chronic pelvic pain and when the growth of the fibroid is, is rapid and in case of uh, big size of fibroid. In these circumstances, we would consider surgery. So we have uh, laparoscopic or abdominal myomectomy 
followed by hysteroscopic myomectomy. So when we pe perform hysteroscopic myomectomy, there is a potential complication of uterine synechia. That is why always post-operatively we should follow up with a hysterosalpingography. In these patients, post-operatively we, we follow up with a hysterosalpingography. Next up we have hysterectomy. Hysterectomy is mostly done in case of old females. And the myomectomy is preferred in case of young females. So another modality we have is uterine artery embolization where we catheterize the uterine artery, UA for uterine artery, and then we inject microbeads of polyvinyl alcohol. So through this modality, we can selectively occlude the circulation of the fibroid. And this is not done when the female desires fertility. So it is contraindicated when the female desires fertility. So here you can see a picture which I couldn't get a better picture from Google. So this is just a, a rough picture where you can see that there is catheterization of the uterine artery. And in this case, we can uh, inject polyvinyl alcoholic beads that would occlude the uterine artery specifically in the area of the location of the fibroid. So this is all about uterine fibroids. And here you can see uh, myomectomy, removal of the fibroid. But here the fibroid is removed. This is before and after the procedure of myomectomy. So this is all about fibroids.